Raw Review Mini. Haven't done this in a while. Three things I'll talk about. Just three. Not doing a whole bunch because there was a lot going on in that Raw. And I'm not in the mood to do it all. There's just... This is one of the reasons why I'm getting burnt out on Raw again. Three hours of a lot of filler. A lot of stuff. And it gets on my nerves sometimes. So I'm condensing down just three things that are important. Sorry if you wanted a full review, not getting it. I'm sorry. But this first one is... First one. First one is about the Fatal Five Way. The beginning of the show where a lot of people were happy Jason Jordan. Look, I want to say this very clearly and Andre Corbell said it right. How can you be happy a wrestler is hurt playing a character? He's playing a character. How can you be happy because his character gets on your nerves, gets you angry, you want him hurt. Dude, he's doing his job as an actor. A physical actor. Come on. Anyone that is happy to see this guy actually hurt, there must be something wrong with you. Think about what you're saying. And I'm not being insulting. I'm not trying to piss you off, but think about it. Do you want to see one of your most favorite people hurt? Because, well, he's your favorite person? Come on. It would be like a relative that you actually love. And they get hurt and you're happy laughing at them. It's pretty much the same principle. You don't say you're happy someone's hurt when they don't deserve to be hurt. Just because they're doing their job. Okay? Now, take away from that. We have some controversy at the end of Raw. We got Seth and we got... You know what would have been different? Because I, I, I don't hate Seth. And I don't hate Finn Balor. But I would have liked to see either Apollo Crews or the person that should have won, Matt Hardy. Matt should have won that match and gone into Elimination Chamber. Not Bray Wyatt, not Finn, not Seth. And saying that I would like Apollo as a wild card to give him the opportunity to see if he'll get over. And hopefully make Vince not look so racist. I'm sorry, I, I'm not a racist person, but it's obvious when you look at the company, because of how it's run, Vince is a bit biased towards black wrestlers. It, it's not something I'm happy to say. It's not something that should be said, but it's the truth. And it's sad to see it. It is. But in the end, seeing that it's now Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, it's not interesting me. It would have been better if it was an Apollo Crews. Yes, it would have pissed a lot of people off. That Apollo Crews got this option. But guess what? Why not a little change up? Something different. The person that should have got it should have been Matt Hardy. The broken gimmick or woken gimmick. I don't care if they call it woken or broken. It's a good one. And they're doing nothing with it. He would have made this more interesting. It would have taken him away from Bray Wyatt. Which he needs. If anyone has been enjoying Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy. Come on. It's run its course, and Matt Hart is being dragged down by Bray Wyatt. He is. So I'm not interested in seeing this, because next week or the week after, just before Elimination Chamber, they're going to have to give these guys a match to he... To, ah, I'm not interested in it. I don't want to see these two go at it to see who gets the spot at Elimination Chamber. I just don't. Second, will be about what happened with... Elias Samson. I'm going to keep calling Elias Samson. I know I can call him Elias. I like calling him Elias Samson because that's how he got started out in NXT. That's how he got started here. And I feel like the Samson part really fits his physique. That's just me. And what happened with Braun Strowman? Oh, I think that was the most funniest. That was the funniest shit on Raw. You can say a lot was funny on Raw. Actually, there wasn't that much funny in Raw. But that was the one thing that made my ass laugh. Elias did his job well. He psyched up the crowd. He pissed off the crowd. And then Braun Strowman comes out with a cello. Breaks the fake cello. Or if it was a real one, he broke it. And he started singing in a light voice. Not this voice. More of this voice. His natural voice. Something I didn't think we would ever hear from him. It was... <laughs> it 
Him singing was funny as hell. Him going to the ring was funny as hell. Him beating the crap out of Elias was fine. Smashing that freaking either real cello or fake cello onto the back of Elias Sampson was nice. Everyone loved it. I loved it. That was awesome. I don't know if anyone else liked it. I did like it. It was nice to see that Braun Strowman could go out of his character and do something that actually got the crowd interested. That shows even though he is still a noob as a wrestler, he can still do something different and still get over. He is so over right now as a freaking baby face. It is like teeth rottening sweet. <laughs> People love the guy. They don't want to boo him. They're cheering his ass. And that's the way it should be. Now the last thing, and it's going to be the title. Nia Jax is a joke for the pay-per-view. I'm going to put that as the title, I'm sure. If I'm not, I'm just going to put Nia Jax or Nia is a joke. Look, you saw what happened with Bailey and Sasha Banks. A great match. I did enjoy it. In the end, Nia Jax came in, destroyed them both quickly. And then when I believe it was Charlie who came out and said... Why did you interfere with it? It's just I had to interfere. Everyone was focusing on them, not on me. You know, when Nia was in NXT, she was great. And even though she lost, she was still a credible threat to anyone because they always made sure that she just barely lost. But now that she came onto the main roster, she has not been able to win anything to save her freaking life. She's gotten her ass beaten by a Sasha. She's gotten her ass beaten, well, not by a Bailey, but essentially it took all the women to get her ass and nail her ass. Now you say, well, of course. It took all of them to do it, but it shouldn't. They shouldn't. They should be afraid of her. Not coming all together brave. Nia Jax is a monster that everyone should fear. Not come together to feel brave. And that is how she's been booked. Someone that has no fear behind her. Nothing. Zero. Zip. When you saw Nia Jax, it, it was, it's, it's a joke now. Yes, she can squash a jobber. Yes, she can squash a couple of people like a Dana Brooke. But when it comes to actually doing something where she can try and get the title, she can't do it. When it comes to someone who's really high and mighty, she can't do it. She's a freaking joke. They will not let her get the freaking title. She should have at least had the title once in the last lap. Last year, she should have had it once. Even if she only held it for a month because of injury. They, they did a storyline of her doing injury. It's a joke. Nia Jax is a joke. So why in the blue fuck would you put her up against Asuka? Asuka's known to kick her ass in NXT. She's done it. She has destroyed Nia Jax in NXT. She has. So why do I actually believe Nia Jax is going to beat Asuka? Nia Jax has been a joke for nearly a year. She can't get the job done. She can't get the damn title. She can't beat any of the women. Oh yeah, she can beat them up when it's without a title, but when it's time for a title, she can't get the job done. Or better yet, they don't even let her get a chance to get the freaking title. So what is the fucking point of a Nia Jax? If you don't even let her pull the trigger. You know who she reminds me of? Guess who she reminds me of? Tamina! Tamina Snuka. You can say a lot about Tamina not having a character. You can say she's not very skillful in the ring. She doesn't have uh, any type of charisma, any type of mic you no matter what. But she should have already had a title at least once in the years that she's been around. She's been around since 2010. She started in 2010, well before Naomi. She started when the Usos started. She was with them. Why hasn't she ever had a chance to get a title? They don't want to give it to her. And it can't be because she has no skill. It can't be because she can't work in the ring. It can't be because she can't talk. There have been women that are worse than her have got it. The Bellas have gotten multiple title reigns before they actually improved themselves enough to actually be something you can actually say, well, they're credible wrestlers. 
and she's never got it. So look at Nia Jax. She's worse than her. She's twice her size, and she can't get the job done on women three times smaller than her. She should have been able to destroy anyone in her path, and she can't even do that properly. So this is just a joke. I, I, I don't see this. I, I understand why she left at one point to take a break. She couldn't stand it anymore that they're doing nothing with her. But this is just my point of view. I hope you enjoyed this Raw Review Mini. Give me a comment below and watch for my SmackDown review. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.